Dr. Larley again with the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Right now we're going to be in Ezra and Nehemiah. And uh, as you have probably noticed so far, the lessons are not that long in each book because we're focusing in on those things pertaining to the Holy Spirit, uh, holiness, sanctification, separation, and all other such things that have been discussed so far. Uh, Ezra 1, 1, the God stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, and that's to send those who wish to go back and rebuild the temple, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, and, and uh, put it back together, and say prayers to the Lord for the king. In verse 5, the spirit is raised up. That's a spirit with a small s, and God can uh, take the spirit that is within you and uh, uh, inflame it with his Holy Spirit. Ezra chapter 2, verses 52 to 63, the most holy place is polluted. Well, they had polluted with their idolatry, and uh, now it was just polluted by the fact that it was all torn down and burnt with fire. Question 1. Ezra 6.20, what is this purification all about? It's one of the things the holiness ping on. That's one of the things that was pointed out in the book by Dr. Hills, that uh, of purification. Question 2, Ezra 8.28, how is it that they are holy? What in the context there uh, in, in Ezra chapter 8, for verse 28 that makes these people holy. In Ezra 9.2 it's the holy seed. Ezra 9.8 in his holy place. Whose place is that? Ezra 9.15 the Lord's righteousness the Lord is righteous and we are not. And as it was then so it is still the same today the Lord is righteous and we are not. Any righteousness you manifest will either be self-righteousness or that which is given you by the Holy Spirit because you're in the Word of God. Question 3. Explain the confession and separation necessary in Ezra 10, 11 in the context of the whole chapter. Ezra chapter 10. Jumping to Nehemiah. And for Ezra and Nehemiah, see Bible Lesson 123, A and B. Uh, a is 15 lectures uh, out of Ezra and Nehemiah. And then B is a workbook that uh, built on questions out of Ezra and Nehemiah and other minor prophets. And you answer all the questions. So that's, each one is one semester hour credit. Question 4. Discuss Nehemiah's prayer in chapter 1. Nehemiah 7.25. They are to eat the most holy things. That would be the priest and then those who make an offering. Question 5. Is there any significance in the water gate? Nehemiah 8.1. Question 6. Discuss the content of of Nehemiah 8, 4 to 13. That's Nehemiah 8, 4 to 13. In Nehemiah 9, 14 is the Holy Sabbath. Nehemiah 9, 20, thy good spirit. And in verse 13, 30, it is the prophets. So do you have a good spirit? If there were still prophets today, would you be one? Nehemiah 12, 30, purified the people. Who did that? And for what purpose? Nehemiah 13, 22. Sanctify the Sabbath. God invented the Sabbath back in Genesis. So why is they are called for sanctifying the Sabbath? Nehemiah 13, 25 to 26. What was Solomon's sin? And you could study the seven sins of Solomon in BI 106, Romans, parts 1, 2, and 3. 
And one of the side studies of that course is the seven sins of Solomon. Question seven. How do you see the spirit operating in Ezra and Nehemiah? Good question. So in this assignment for Ezra and Nehemiah, you have only seven questions to answer. Next in our studies of the Spirit of God in the Old Testament is Esther and Job. Esther, chapter 2, verse 12, days of purification. What did Esther go through to be purified? What do you need to go through to be purified? Question 1. Research the Feast of Purim in Esther 9, verses 26 to 32. Find out about what do they do today. Question 2. How do you see the operation of the Spirit in Esther? Job. Job 1, 1, and 8. Perfect, fear, and upright. Those words are attributed to Job. He was perfect, he feared the Lord, and he was upright. 1, 5, he sanctified his children. How about that? How could he do that? For what purpose did he do that? Have you sanctified your children? Question three. Explain how the sons of God and Satan have access to God in Job 1 and 2. Question four. Explain the power given to Satan over Job, the Sabians, fire, and weather. In Job 1, 14 to 19. In Job 3, 11, it speaks of gave up the ghost. Question 5. Explain Job chapter 4, verse 9. Question 6. Explain Job chapter 4, verses 12 to 16. Job 6, 4 says something about poison, drink, up my spirit. Hmm, I wonder what that's about. You should look at that. Job 6, 10, the Holy One. Most of the uses of the term the Holy One is in the book of Isaiah, and we'll probably be looking at that when we get there. Job 8, 6, if you were pure. Big if, if you were, are you? Job 8.20, not cast away a perfect man. Would that include you? Would God not cast you away if you were a perfect man? How do you become a perfect man? Job 9.15, thought I were righteous, not answer. Do you think you're righteous? Do you have an answer for the Lord? Is your righteousness His righteousness? Or is your righteousness self-righteousness? Job 9, 18. Not suffered to take breath. Hmm. Just think about it. Right now you're breathing. But one moment after you have read this or heard this, God could snatch your breath away and you'd be dead. Job 9.20, if I say I'm perfect, he will prove me perverse. That's a good caution against self-righteousness. Paul never claimed to be perfect. He claimed to be pressing toward the mark. Even in his as his death approached, he still pressed forward. Question 7. Explain Job chapter 9, verses 30 to 32. Job ten twelve. Preserved my spirit. Only God can do that. 
at any moment. He could take his spirit away from you and you would be dead. Job 10.15, wicked, righteous confusion. Yeah, when we look at the wicked of the wicked and we look at the righteous of the righteous and we compare one to the other, very confusing. Job 11.4, my doctrine is pure. Well, I don't know what Job knew back like about 2500 B.C., I think. I know what I know, and to the best of my ability, what I give you is pure doctrine based on the Word of God. Question 8. Explain Job chapter 11, verses 7, 8, 9. Job 11.20, giving up the ghost. That's what Job wanted to do. But God did not allow that. Job 12.10, soul and breath of every man. That's what God holds. He's got a hold on you. And he won't keep it that way. Job 14.10, giving up the ghost again. Job 15.13, the spirit of against God. Is your spirit against God? Or are you looking for his Holy Spirit? Job 15, 30 and 34. We have darkness, flame, and breath. Hmm. Job 17, 1. My breath is corrupt. How corrupt is your breath? Job 17.1, my breath corrupt. Job 17.14, corruption is my father. Some father to have, you're going to fertilize the grass. Job 19.17, breath strange to wife. I don't know, he must have had a very bad breath, but his breath was strange to his wife. Question 9. Explain Job 19, verses 25 to 29. Job 20, verse 3, my spirit of understanding. Do you have a spirit of understanding the things of the Lord? Is there a spirit of revelation within you? Job 21, 4, my spirit troubled. No doubt, considering Job was lost his family, lost his health, lost everything he had, I think I'd be troubled too. Job 22, 3, God takes pleasure in your righteousness. Your righteousness. What you do or what you do not do. God takes note of it and he takes pleasure in the things you do which are right. Job 23, 7 Righteous dispute with the judge. Hmm. One of these days you're going to face the judge. Will you have anything to say for yourself? Question 10 Explain Job chapter 25, verses 4, 5, and 6. Can man be justified with God? Well, consider when Job lived, what about then? Considering where you live now, what about you? Can you be justified with God? Job 26, 13. By his spirit the heavens came to be. If you go back to Genesis 1, 2, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light. And then we have the rest of the reconstruction story. Job 27, 3, the breath of God in my nostrils. And there I have it. You breathe, you breathe the breath of God. And at any moment he can decide to take it away. Job 27, 6, by righteousness I hold. 
Hmm. My righteousness. And Job had some. And God recognized his. Job 28, 5, there is fire under the earth. And you know that every time a volcano erupts and spews out its lava, then you know that underneath is fire. Job 29, 14, clothed in righteousness. Was Job clothed in righteousness? Are you clothed in righteousness? Is that self-righteousness or the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Job 31, 12, a fire that consumes. How does that compare to the fire of the Pentecostals? Do you have the fire? Fire burns. Are you hot? Job 32, 8, there is a spirit in man, inspiration of the Almighty. You have a connection with God. You have a connection through the spirit, which gives you life. You have a connection through the soul, which is your part of your image of God. And you have a relationship through the body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Question 11. Discuss the content of chapter 33. Job 32, 18. The spirit within me constrains me. Is there a spirit that constrains you from doing wrong and doing right? Job 33, 3. The uprightness of my heart. How upright is your heart? Would God compare you to Job? Would God treat you like he treated Job? Would God trust you like he trusted Job? Job 33, 4. The Spirit of God made me. There you go. Back to Genesis. And God made man out of the dust of the earth and breathed his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Job 33, 9. I am clean. Ooh, what a statement. I don't think I'd say that. How about you? Would you say that? I am clean. Job 33, 26. He rendered to, to man his righteousness. When you stand before the judge and you declare your righteousness, will he render you according to your righteousness? Job 34, 5. Job said, I am righteous. Hmm. There he is, a repeat. Job said he was righteous. Are you? Job 34, 14. God gather man's breath and spirit. He can just suck your breath away in the moment in the twinkling of an eye and you'll be gone. Job 35, 2, is my righteousness more than God's? Whew. Now there's a thought. And I would not even go there. Job 35, 7 and 8, if thou be righteous, if. Job 36, 3, ascribe righteousness to my maker. Of course. He is the righteous, the just, and the holy one. The counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. What else do you want to ascribe to God? Job 36, 14. Life among the unclean. Well, we certainly live there. Job 37, 10. By the breath of God. You still hear. If you're not here, then God took your breath away. Then we come to Job 38, 1, where the Lord answered Job. Job been pleading for a face-to-face -face encounter, and he finally got it. Job 38, 7, the morning stars and the sons of God. Now there's you a Bible study. 
the morning stars and the sons of God. Who are they? Where are they? What are they doing? What did they do to Job? Question 12. Discuss Job 38, 31, and 32, the Pleiades, the Orion, and the Mazareth. And I have a course for that in natural science on the Mazareth. Job 40, verse 3, Job answered, The Lord? Hmm. Verse 6, The Lord answered. So, the Lord answered Job in verse 1 in chapter 38. And then in 40, verse 3, Job answered. And then in verse 6, the Lord answered him back. Does the Lord talk to you? Job 40, verse 8, condemn the Lord to be righteous. What does that mean? You should look that up and, and meditate on that. Job 40, verse 8. The Lord is righteous, and you should be condemned. Question 13. Job 41, 19 to 21. Out of his mouth a flame of fire. So discuss Job 41, verses 19 to 21, and the flame of fire. See if you can explain that one. In Job 42, 1, Job answered. Final analysis. And Job makes a confession. What does he confess? So, in this study you have 13 questions to answer.